Hello everyone and welcome back to the RMTV Women's Podcast. This is episode 134, I want to say. I don't know. I can never remember. I always forget. I Usually know. I check last week's video, but I just haven't today. It's either 134 or 135. It's along those lines. It's in the mm. Yeah. Um, how are we today, Amy? Obviously the sun has been shining. Can you not tell sun. from my nose? To be fair, it doesn't look too bad on camera. I mean, we've got a little bit closer than... You know, yeah, there we go. We can see it now. <laughs> yep, there it is. I have been in the sunshine. Amy, Amy enjoyed that bank holiday. I did. Um, you know what? It's amazing how much, like, a bit of sun can just make me feel so much nicer. Do you know what I mean? Oh, just be like, oh, the sun's shining. I'm going to go out. I'm not going to sit inside all day. Yeah. And yet That's here cool. we are, sat inside. And I have been all day. Yeah, you've been away today. I, I was looking <laughs> off and I wasn't in work today, so I enjoyed the sunshine. Yeah. I was in work yesterday, though, on Bank Holiday Monday, so everyone got well to enjoy that. Well done. Oh, you? I work, you know what I mean? Well, very few. We got through it, but... On the double time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good time. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> and I'm off tomorrow as well, which is supposedly highs of 27. So I'm going That's to be living... That's hot, in, though. That's that like... Hot. Holiday pool temperature. I Not, think I'm gonna ha- I'm gonna have to go shorts. I really I just have this thing about wearing shorts in the UK. Mm. I don't know why. I just like don't trend. enjoy it unless it's like gym shorts when I'm going to the gym. Don't even do that. But or like I wear it if I'm just at home, like mm. whatever, so no one sees. But I just have a thing about wearing shorts in public. I just don't like it. Just, it just yeah, get right with me. I feel that. I feel like. Lauren, remember that you're in Liverpool. You're not in Marbella. You're not in you? like Barbados. Yeah, no. exactly. So I'll have to judge it tomorrow. See whether I can power through. Yeah. With um, just jeans. Just though. jeans are just horrible in the heat because they stick. It's and really it's like, not the one. Oh, maybe they need to make. I don't know. Maybe I just need to be tanned and then I'll feel okay about it. Yeah. Because at the moment I'm like a squashy. So that's fun. <laughs> Can you tell I was wearing a t-shirt this weekend? <laughs> look, how, look, how pale, look how pale you are, though. I don't know. It's not that. In real life, it's not that pale. I don't know why. It just looks it like a squashy. It's probably the, it's the light. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's good to call it that. Yeah, definitely. I was, can anyone tell I was wearing a t-shirt this weekend? <laughs> oh, God. I know. Oh, no. Um, oh, well. But yeah, I hope everyone has enjoyed the um, the bank holiday and the sunshine. I, know we I certainly have. did. Yeah. A um, couple of topics to discuss today. The first one that we want to chat about is obviously the Team GB um, Olympic squad dropped last week. It dropped after we posted last week's podcast. That's why it wasn't involved in that. That always happens to us. Something always, always comes out always. after we've posted and we thought, do you know what? We'll leave it for next week instead of doing a separate video on it. We'll make it a topic of conversation for today's podcast. Um, so, yeah, Team GB squad was announced. Um, we'll put a, little, put a little picture of the um, the team, the full squad, on the screen now for you. But um, looking at it, there's some names in there that I'm like, yeah. I think, I think everyone going deserves to go. Um. There are a few names, however, that I feel have been very much overlooked in their categories. Um, so we'll, 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 we'll say each one by category, so we'll go goalkeepers first. Yeah. We've got Karen Barzi and we've got Elliot Roebuck. And then we've obviously got Sandy McCarver in the reserves. Um, obviously, that's in case any players get injured and whatnot. But Karen Barzi and Elliot Roebuck are the two that are in the main squad. Um, no. No real, no qualms. I'm yeah. a bit like Karen Bartley. Okay, I mean I'm not like against yeah. it, but I'm also like, okay. Yeah, I feel like she was a little bit like, she's probably going more so for the experience rather than the. I think obviously Ellie Roebuck will probably play most of the games, mm-hmm. if not all, depending on schedule and stuff like that. But Karen Bartley's probably there just for like the experienced face around the team. Um, but yeah, no no qualms there but for goalkeepers. Um, defenders, we have Millie Bright, Lucy Bronze, Rachel Daly, Steph Orton, Demi Stokes and Leah Williamson. 
And then we've obviously got Lottie Ruben Moy in the reserves. And then we've got Neve Charles, who can sort of play like that right wing back position as well. Um, again, no qualms with that. However, I do think one player who has been very much overlooked this season for this squad is Alex Greenwood. Um, it's crazy, isn't it? Because when yeah. when you think about it, I feel like a, a quite a big, I could be wrong, but a factor of her moving back from Lyon to the UK, obviously the fact that the WSL is growing is, is probably a huge attraction in itself, but you would have thought maybe that she wanted to be in the UK to give herself a better chance of being picked. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. a lot of the UK players that are going actually play in the WSL as well, and there's probably a lot more exposure for her if she was back in the WSL to really like be like, look, I'm here, like, choose me. Yeah. Um. So for her, I think she'll be absolutely devastated. Um. And it's a bit of a shock, to be honest, in in my view, because I feel like she probably could play a little bit further up as well. So versatility in yeah. that sense. Yeah, it's just it's just a bit of a mad one. Like to be honest, looking at the the, the defense there, there's no one I'd take out of it. Maybe if you're gonna swap anyone out for Alex Greenwood, it's probably gonna be Rachel Daly. Yeah, or Demi um, Stokes. Or Demi Stokes, but. Yeah, I just thought Alex Greenwood was a bit bit of a mad one, like for all the, the all the things you said there. And then obviously just that she's obviously kept like Demi Stokes out of that city squad as well. This exactly, season. yeah, it's crazy. Which, like Yeah, how? which makes it weird. Yeah. It'd be nice yeah. to know what the the thought process was. I mean, there's probably out there on the internet the thought process, but I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I um, think I think a lot of people have had the same sort of Yeah mindset as we have in terms of how like how is what what more could she have done to have got in that squad really Isn't yeah it? i don't know it's yeah. it's difficult and arguably she's probably played some of the best football that she's ever played um yeah so it's we don't make the decisions but it definitely when i've seen it come out that she wasn't in it i was like whoa yeah crazy um we're moving on to midfielders then. So we've got Sophie Ingle, Kim Little, Jill Squat, Jill Squat, <laughs> Jill Squat, yeah, Jill Scott, Kira Wolf, and Caroline Weir. <laughs> Jill Squat. Jill Squat. Oh god. Um. Yeah. Again, no qualms about that. Um. I think Jill Scott was obviously the big one for. I think that was the whole reason why she obviously moved back, went on loan to Everton, was so that she could get more game time, so that she could mm-hmm. be in this squad. Probably is going to be her last Olympic and yeah. last chance at it, so she would have wanted that. Um, I'm happy to see, obviously, like you've got two Scottish playing there and one Welsh player in there and Sophie Ingle, so nice little diverse in the midfield there. But for me, I think one midfielder that's, again, being overlooked is Jordan Nobbs. Mm-hmm. Um, mad that she hasn't been included in this or even selected in the reserves list. Um, again, like she's, I think she's very much carried Arsenal in some games last season, as mm-hmm. has Leah Williamson. I think that she, she like she's thoroughly deserved to be in the defenders. But yeah, I think out of you know all of all of them, I think Jordan Nobbs has definitely been overlooked there. But I think it's obviously the the battle of having you know, four different nations to pick from in one mm-hmm. team. Um, so you obviously have to be a bit diverse and include, you know, Sophie Ingle, Kim Little, Carl we probably deserve to be in there. I think Kim Little is a little bit touch and go considering she was injured for like a little bit of, this, of last season and stuff like that. But I think, I think yeah, again, it, it's more experience. Yeah, you yeah. know why? She's a great player, so. Yeah. Yeah, so I agree with quite... the Jordan Nobbs thing, you know, because yeah. it's it's one of them where I think you automatically assume that she's going to be picked um, because of not just the name, but obviously like all the previous competitions she's been to. Um, and obviously she missed out on the World Cup a few years ago mm-hmm. through injury. Um, so you would have thought that maybe this was her like big competition uh, yeah. in, in replace of that. 
so it was I was a bit like whoa when that there's a few that I've been a bit like wow okay that's interesting how they've not been picked but at the end of the day there's 18 players you can pick from yeah am I right 18 yeah yeah um so you've got to be so decisive with the decisions that you make and obviously there's gonna have to have been a few tough conversations there um trying to trying to get the right squad but yeah that is a strange one because I, I guess it, what it comes down to when it's a small squad is versatility isn't it yeah and like quite a lot of players on there like you Georgia Stanways you Neve Charles the Rachel Daly's like they can all play in several different positions yeah. which is when you have a, such a small squad like that is like what you're sort of trying to go for and what you aim for so yeah you can kind of see it but then also it's like wow as if Jordan Nobbs isn't going. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's really strange. And I think that would have been, like, really tough for her as well. Like, you've just said, because she missed out on the World Cup. Yeah. And then, obviously, there'll be a new manager coming after the Olympics is over. But mm-hmm. it's kind of like, it. whenever you want, whenever you go to see an England squad, for, whether it's for a camp or whether it's for a tournament or just a, a set of matches, if Jordan Nobbs isn't in it, it's like... Is she injured or? Yeah, they like just yeah. assume that she's injured, but she's always in them squads. Whereas she's not in this one. It's just like there obviously has been some sacrifices, and she's one of them. But yeah, it's just it's just a bit mad. But I am I am really happy to see Caroline Weir go. I think if she wasn't in it, then yeah. there would have been an uproar because she has been amazing for so many years. Definitely, um, definitely. So and she's just going to be so key in that in that role and just like linking play up I think I think mm-hmm. she's she's got to start every game that she possibly can while while at the Olympics because she's just 100%. going to be so crucial 100% um, yeah we'll move on to forwards then so we've got Lauren Hemp Frank Kirby Nikita Paris Georgia Stanway and Ellen White um, yeah again no qualms every player in his boss uh, guaranteed goals with those you, I mean, that's five. the aim, isn't it? Yeah. Guaranteed goals with them five. I think Georgia Stanway is obviously the, and Lauren Hemp are obviously the most, the two inexperienced out of the forwards selected there. But then... they still got I, experience. I, <laughs> exactly. It's it's weird because they're young and they're inexperienced, but they're not at the same time. Because if, especially if you look at Georgia Stanway, she's been involved in that City team for a couple of seasons now. She's been involved the in... the Cup. Yeah, she's been involved in the major tournament, so she's not an inexperienced player, but she's still young. One of the youngsters. It's it's the same at like Leah Williamson. You know, she's, honestly at this point, Leah Williamson's been around so long. I feel like she's like twenty eight. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But she's, like, she's, she's like she's like she's like twenty three or something like that. And it's like oh, okay, all right then. So yeah. yeah, I mean, again, obviously, Ellen White's your proven striker. Oh yeah, yeah. she's she's the one, isn't she? And then. Yeah. If if you if you're gonna pick you from three to start there, which which three are you picking? Uh Ellen White, Lauren Hemp, and probably Nikita Paris. Yeah. There's a shout I, there's a shout for Stanway like in the ten maybe, but Yeah. But then yeah. there's a shout for Kirby in the ten. Oh sorry, yeah, Frank Kirby, sorry. I'm gonna switch out Paris for Kirby. Or you start in front of no, no. I don't know. I'm indecisive. <laughs> it's weird because Frank Carey, like, I kind of don't want to play her like, out wide. She plays in midfield for me. She's a midfielder. She's probably that little extra midfielder that they've stuck, in, that they've stuck into the forward section. Do you know what I mean? That she's going to play in midfield as well. Um, I agree. What, yeah. Like, there's so much talent, which is, like, the good thing. Like, think yeah. of the players that have missed out as well. Like, Beth Mead's not going. Yeah. Um, Bethany England's not going. Like, there's quite a few. Beth- Bethany England is the one, I think, that it's just kind of, like, last season for Chelsea, she was, like, not the season, just gone the season before. Yeah. She was unbelievable. Obviously, Sam Kerr comes in the January, and, you, and it's like, oh, what's going to happen with Bethany England? If anything, she had a better season and Sam Kerr did that year obviously Sam Kerr has been phenomenal for Chelsea last season yeah and Bethany England like has just missed out on this and you think hmm. it's just so many players that like like you said then Beth Mead like she's proved she's so proven for, for England and Arsenal 
but then she hasn't really been in the squads at, at all the last couple of months for England, which is all, which is a mad one. And you think not even like, in the reserves as well. It's crazy. Yeah, I think that's the big thing for me. Is obviously if you're looking at the reserves, you've got Neve Charles, Sandy McCarver, Ella Toon, and Lottie Ruben White. That's quite yeah. inexperienced and young. Mm. Like if any one of them came into the squad, you're like, oh yeah, Sam, but. Also, none yeah. of them, none of them have been to a major tournament. No. So it's like this is the first big one for them, and obviously it's 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 very unlikely that you have to call upon your reserves. But if you do, you never know. Yeah, exactly. You never know, and it's just kind of like oh, I don't know. It's one of them. Like mm-hmm. yeah, like you said for the likes of like a Jordan Ops, an Extreme Woods, a Bethany, and Bethany England, none of them to to be in the reserves is a bit of a mad one. Um, it is. It I think. Is I think, I think it's, it, overall, like it's a strong team, though. Like, yeah. E- yeah. E- even if Bethany Ingram was in there, you'd be like, oh, they've not chose Lauren Hemp, or like, you, do you know what I mean? Like, if one of them wasn't in there, you'd also be like, oh, they've missed yeah. that. So yeah. you can't win with these situations. Like, there's always going to be people that miss out. But I think obviously the proof is going to be in how well we do in the competition. That's the only way you're going to tell whether that right decision was made. Um, But fingers crossed. I can't believe it's so soon, you know, like it's next month because we're in June now. I know. Are we going to have an Olympics party? Yeah. 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 Um, I feel like there's too many tournaments happening. There's a lot going on. Yeah, every season starts got, the end of June. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you've got, you've got, yeah, you've got the Olympics. You've got the when Euros, the season, like players return to clubs at the end of June. Oh my god, <laughs> it's kind of just like oh my god, like so much. But like we've missed out on so much over the last few last year or so. So it's yeah. all like it's all coming at once. It's all going mad. Yeah. It really is. It really is. Um, but I think I think like we've got to like. I highlight Neve Charles a little bit there because what a year, what a year she has had. Like, what a season. Keep your play in the Champions League final. Can you cope with Literally, that? Actually, like, won the league, played in the Champions League final. Whatever cup Chelsea won, I don't even know now. All of them. Pretty much. Did they win all? Did they? they won the WSL? Yeah, yeah, so they won the league. They won the. Did they not win the Conti Cup or something? The FA Cup. I yeah, they won the. Who won the FA Cup? I've had a complete mind blank. Who won the FA Cup? I'll Google you stop. Was it City? It was City. I think so. City won the... I think it was, because I remember Sam Lewis and Rose Lavelle with the... Manchester the City. Yeah. Yeah. She obviously played, like you said, played in the Champions League final and, and has now been... She's like, now WSL the champion. champion. That's yeah. crazy. And she's now on the reserves. That's for Team GB for the Tokyo Olympics. Like, and you'd imagine she'd be going the Euros next year, all being well. Yeah, all being well. She's in that Euros squad, so it's a big game. Um, if if ever, ever um, yeah. yeah, if ever a uh, uh, transfer has helped a player, that is, that is the one for me. Me, Charles, the Chelsea. Unreal. Obviously, still got to the vault, but you know, still we hurts. Move. But we, <laughs> yeah, we, we move. move. <laughs> um, I I think also. Obviously, a shame that no Northern Ireland, Ireland players were picked in that. You know, if Fernie was just, you know, I think she was just picked, That's all I was going to say. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I think overall, just on, like, the season that they've had as, like, a team and, like, what they've been through, like, I think it, was always, it wasn't always going to happen. But, you know, some of them were probably well looked at, but, you know, here we are. But yeah, yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Like I, I, I mentioned earlier, like it's eighteen players, and I think the fact that the team GB coach is also the England coach, I think players probably in the back of the head from all of the other nations would be like, oh, it's going to be probably a bit harder to get in because yeah. obviously this coach has worked worked day in day out with a few of the England players over like the various camps that have happened. So I think. They probably knew that it was going to be England dominated, and we could probably have told you that as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, it's but it is sad to not see any Northern Ireland representation. Like it, yeah. like it would hurt if you were part of that team, wouldn't you? Like they made it to the Euros next year, yeah. and like, yeah, it's tough. 
I definitely think if Fernie was fit, she would have gone. I mean, there's a shout for Simone McGill as well, but... Yeah, big shout there. Never know. Oh. Never know. It's what it is, I suppose. Yeah. Um, we'll move on. We had a couple of... We put a tweet out this morning asking for a couple of questions or topics that people want to discuss on today's pod. Um, the first one comes from Craig Cadley, obviously, at... Um, does like the Birmingham City Women podcast stuff um check them out if you haven't already but yeah you said is there any players at bristol city or west ham that you'd like to see matt beard sign for liverpool now that is like the big thing with him coming in he does have that pull of being at he's been at like a couple of different teams over the years that it's like players will want to work under Mm -hmm. him um so is there anyone that like immediately jumps out at you that you think oh i'd like them at, at our club I said this to you the other day, I don't know if you remember, but that Leanne Kier Kier Kiernan. Kier Kier Kiernan. <laughs> I don't think that's her second name, like, what? <laughs> I said that to you the other week, didn't I? Yeah, I was like, yeah. that would be pretty cool. I mean, I don't think she necessarily started too much for West Ham this season. I don't know whether mm. that was through injury or whatever. I don't really know much about it, to be honest. I've seen her a few times. Um, but I think, like... You're probably not looking at starters. You're looking at more fringe WSL players, unfortunately. Just in case. What yeah. we're in. Um, unless we strike absolute gold, which, you know, it could happen. Matt could do an absolute legend of a job and get us some care. But, you know, you never know. Um, yeah. Imagine. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> probably Absolutely not. not. Absolutely uh, not. Yeah. Um, I, think- I think, like... In terms of like position wise, we just need a striker, like we a do. full on striker. Number nine, he scores <laughs> goals. A full on striker. Full on. Not just, not just a striker, a full on striker. Yeah, do you know, like we do, we don't score enough goals, like we know that. Yeah. Um. So I think. I think. We need. I think, and then I think also if you look at the players who have left us, um, you obviously you obviously really like the front. Who would you um, get? Who do you want? I don't know. I want I want a really, really good central midfielder. Like I just need I just want someone who's just like gonna dominate that midfield for us. That Amy Palmer from Bristol would be nice. Paul yeah. Would. Yeah, I think um obviously there's Carla Humphrey as well. She's a decent Ooh. player. She's a really good player. I think Laura Rafferty at, at, at the back as well. I was just thinking that, you know, I was just thinking that. But I don't know, I feel like we're all right at the back in terms of personnel. Mm. Who would you swap out for? I wouldn't swap anyone out. I just think in terms of adding to it, because obviously you've lost Becky Jane, so there's like a, there's a void that you want to fill. So maybe Roby goes right back. And you bring in another centre forward. But I think I and think he might I think he might keep Roberts at right back. Oh shout. So you like you stick but with then what you've we've got had this Neve. season. And then you've got Neve, Nick Michaela, and Roby as the centre back cover. And then Far he can play in midfield as well. Yeah. I did like when Far he played T D M. I think it was the Sheffield United game away. It was one of them, wasn't it? We did, we did well that match with her. I'm pretty sure she played it home game of the season, like last, sorry, last game of the season as well. She played yeah, it. Yeah, I think oh, she I did. I want to say. I, I want to say yeah, but you've kind of got like I can I kind of like it the way it's Robert Farhi, uh, more Farhi, Taylor Hines. I, I like that back four. I just think it's solid, but you can't. Have you, have you literally only got Ruby who's like if someone gets injured it's just Ruby mm. yeah so we need like, a bit of squad depth I mean you need a bit more squad depth because you've lost players were played injured last game of the season and that's just not yeah. what you want I think we only yeah. had like three subs or something so <laughs> yeah so I, I, def- I definitely think Laura Rafferty is like up there on the list I think she'd be decent at addition to the squad it uh, just depends um, because these Bryson. players are not Faye Bryson is a good shout. Very good shout. But, like, these players are probably going to be one of playing WSL football. Yeah. But. Yeah. However, 
no, I no, think, just, no. hopefully, all being well, Liverpool are the best chance of, if they join Liverpool, getting back into the WSL. Do you know what I mean? Well, I'd hope. I could be wrong. You never know. What? Yeah, I, I you'd, like to th- you'd, yeah you'd like to think so. And I think... Yeah. I think most people are going to say that about Liverpool next season is that they're going to we're going to be the ones that are going to look to go straight up. Mm-hmm. It's just whether players see it as a difference playing for Bristol in the Championship compared to playing for Liverpool in the Championship. It's whether they see that difference and because you never know, Bristol could come up all guns blazing next season and go straight back up. Durham are obviously there. Sheffield United will, are going to strengthen. So it's just one of them, but. I think we've listed a, a a good few players there that you'd be like, yeah, they they definitely get in our team. I think the only, I think you're more likely to sign Bristol players than you are West Ham players, just simply because of yeah. that drop down to the championship. Not a lot of people yeah. will want to do that, but yeah, you know, Laura Rafty, if you want to come along, El Raf, more than more, go. Yeah, El Raf, we've already got a nickname there. for you. That's what you need. Yeah, see. It's, it's I don't make perfect. the rules. <laughs> well, you do on this podcast. I do. I do. Yeah. Um, wow, we'll on that note, we'll move on. We'll move on. We'll move on. We'll move on. At Klopp is a scouser. Love that. Um, as asked, what matches are you most excited to watch next season? Do we have a chance of promotion? Oh my god, absolutely all of them because I only went to three last season. I don't care. Literally any is. game of any, any game of football. Literally. Um, Although I always really enjoy like the FA Cup and Conti Cups because we get to play like the United, the Arsenals, like the Chelsea's. I always enjoy I like big games. I hope, I hope we get Chelsea because I just want to see Sam Kerr play live. Yeah. Like that's, that's the only reason I want it for. If or City, because I'd quite like... I know that Lavelle's gone now, but, like, Abby Dalkempo and that lot. Lucy is, she still gonna sl- is she I still going to so. stay? I think Cause so. Because since we mentioned about her, and obviously the end of, end of herself season has started again. I'm obviously pretty Sam sure Lewis- she signed a two-year, I want to say. Oh, did she? Obviously, Sam Lewis went back, Rose Lavelle really went back. Bad. But that, That's I think awesome. they were only ever one-season things anyway, and then they've obviously signed the... Um, is it, it's not allocation money, I don't think, or it might be, or something like that, something to do with, like, the, the oh, God, the I don't team. Know. I think they get more money if they play over in the end of the spell or something like that, so you can't blame them for that. But, yeah, I'll be yeah. dark in position. But um, I always like our games against Sheffield United. I feel like there's always just that little bit of extra rivalry there. It's I don't know drama. why. I don't know I think, why. I think it's because, obviously, Neil Redfern used to be our manager, so obviously that's a part of it. But then mm. also quite a lot of our ex-players play there now. Like, you've got Sweetman, Kirk, sure. Kitchen, obviously Sophie Bradley's just signed there as well. Leandra just, has just left because she's retired. Yeah. Um, but obviously, Ali Johnson used to play there as well. So there's a, quite a lot of ex-players that played there. So that's probably why we think... It's more of a rivalry because you don't want to, you don't want the players you've just let go score against you. Yeah, and obviously we like, we did a double over them last season, didn't we? And I was like, yes, like actually buzzing about it. Um, Do you remember that three? Was it was it three one at, at Prenton the year before last? I can't remember. Oh, anyway, that was a good game. The Durham's. <laughs> I am not looking forward to. Um, we because don't like Durham always do us dirty. Like I don't know what it is. It's like a bogey team for us. I'm not looking forward to Durham's. But yeah. yeah. Obviously, the, then like the matchup with Bristol City again will be nice. Um, who else? We're we going to go down to Bristol. Down? Bit of a trek, that isn't it? It's an over, that's an overnight. Nice that. I'm just going to ch- check how long it actually is. I'm pretty sure that's like a good drive. That like yeah. if that's a, we're not going over to an evening game, absolutely not. Let me have a look. A Where's hours. Bristol? <laughs> oh, it's near like Cornwall, isn't it? Yeah. So, right. Actually, that's not that bad. How long, How far from here, from Manchester, where I am, how long do you think it is? Four hours. No. Less. Yeah. Three. It's three hours, 59 minutes. That's not bad. <laughs> Four hours. No, two hours, 53 minutes. Sorry, two hours, 53. You'll say three hours, 59 minutes. You were trying uh, to like squeeze me a minute there. Yeah, two hours, 50, that's not that bad. Yeah, but that's, that's like 
that's from now like eight o'clock in the night yeah so maybe yeah Tuesday. maybe like three and a half hours four. think of it think of it on a weekend uh, no we're anyway going. we're not going to the although the ones that we can go to like we can go to blackburn yeah we can go to we could go to durham how far is durham away I don't know. This this is just ten to um. This is like Two Geo hours ten minutes. Stuff. It's not. It's pretty. It's pretty much like not that far to get to Durham than it is to get to Bristol. That boggles my mind. Um, who else have we got? We could try a um a London game Ooh, if we have a fancy. That would be that fun. Would be fun. Wouldn't it? Have we got any? No, Coventry. That's pretty. How far away is Coventry? I feel like that's pretty far. I think that's pretty. Uh, uh, one hour fifty-eight. Right. See, that's the Coventry far. train station. I don't know where the Coventry football pitch is in oh. relation to this. I know you're probably you're probably getting like random things, and there's no like, <laughs> stadium is nowhere near to those things. I'm gonna start doing that now. Um, but yeah, I feel like our aim for the this next season is to go to more away games. Yeah, definitely. Because I mean, we couldn't help it this season. I'd love to have just gone to home games, to be honest, but we didn't even get, we didn't even get that far. Well. <laughs> you yeah. did. I didn't. Yeah. It's no, a, but yeah, there's a, there's a couple of matchups that, that are... There is. Um, Let's go now. We'll get there early. <laughs> Come on then. <laughs> Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, yeah, that's everything on this week's agenda. We've probably missed something. We've been so informative. We've actually done some geography today. We've done some geography, like GeoGuessr. <gasps> That's a good time. We should do that. We should play that. We should. That'd be good, though. Yeah. We probably have no idea. No. I thought I thought Bristol was about a six-hour journey. So I can't yeah. believe it's only just uh, over. It's just under three hours. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, let's go. Wow. Well. Wow. Well. Where else? Uh, let's not go into it. Let's not no, everyone's clicked off now. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's everything on this week's agenda. Um, hope you enjoyed. Let us know what games you're most looking forward to next season. Obviously, you don't have to be a Liverpool fan to tell us that. You could be from anywhere in any league. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. Remember to like the video, comment, subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you all next time with a new video. Bye.